Am I really for unity? Hi, I'm Anne Margaret with this week's Sacred Sunday message to raise the vibration of your body, mind, and spirit. This talk is going to be a challenging one, I know, but we never tackle easy issues. So thanks for joining me today. The I asked in the description of this, like how hypocritical is it to call for unity when we have acted so divisively? It is more of a call for conformity rather than unity, isn't it? Regardless of our political affiliation or our religious belief or our familial stance uh, with our siblings or with our children or parents, a call for unity is something quite different. And it's worth us taking a few moments to ask ourselves today, is, is this really what I'm standing for? Because we can point our finger at others and they can obviously be saying that they're claiming unity, but we can't control the actions or the words of others, right? So we can only be the change that we wish to see in the world. So today, thank you for joining me. Thank you for going on this inquiry with me because as we have had a political changing of the guard, this word in particular is being kicked up so often. And it's so applicable, not only on our political stage, of course, but in our own families, in our relationships, in our partnerships, uh, at work and at home. So thanks for joining me. So first question I want to kind of address, is it is it unity or is it conformity? This is very critical to ask ourselves because we live, if we'll go on a political stage for a second, and I don't even want to say political because it's just about the relationship that we have to our country, even though the political environment is so heated right now, especially. We live in the United States of America. We don't live in the conformed or enslaved states of America or bullying or mob rule or majority rules. We actually live in a country which is so incredible it's a constitutional republic now this is something that i didn't know when i went through school i didn't know the the difference between the two between a democracy and between a constitutional republic but the way that our country was founded was to protect minorities it was to protect minorities and protect the sovereignty of all now whether this is in our our world our our country our national stage of looking at how we're treating one another through social media or in our families a constitutional republic if we recognize the sovereignty of each person of each person then we're not going to have the sort of mob mentality of like mob rules majority rules it really defends the, the small guy, the one who doesn't have much of a voice. And this is what's so extraordinary about how our country was founded and the constitution of our United States. So unity is possible if the sovereignty of all is respected. And if you look at family, you know, it's not possible to have unity in family if one of the siblings or one of the parents or the children has resigned their power, has resigned their voice to another person. You can say this in your own romantic partnerships, right, as well. It's not unity, it's conformity. So you're gonna have people who are different from you. That is welcome to human race, right? This is the reality we live in. But what we wanna remember is that conformity is never possible in our families unless one member forfeits their power to another's dominance. And conformity is never possible in a country unless we live in a enslavement or like a communist rule void of freedom. And when we hear these labels thrown around, and I'm going to talk today not only about the trap of labels, but also I promised you to give you like the three steps towards true unity uh, that you can practice. So hang in there. We're going to have some really helpful tools here in a moment. But let's look at labels first, because this is something that begins around eight and 12 years old. It's the third chakra. It's our ego or identity. And if you think back to that lovely time, you can never pay me enough to go back to junior high. But that's the time when all the labels come in. So there is a very juvenile third chakra awareness right now in the world that is a trend of shaming through labeling. 
Now, this is very destructive and it's very divisive. It's anything but unifying. And we see this if we look on the political spectrum, we see it on both sides. So I'm not here to convince you to one side or the other. I'm here to lay out a mirror or a framework through which we can look and we can see where we're trapped in lower vibrational frequencies. So it's very elementary, it's very juvenile. It reminds me of being on the playground, right? Or in junior high, like, like you don't realize in labels or maybe somebody was labeled as this and, and the mob sort of like, you know, the popular kids or whatever started talking about that person that way. And you thought, oh, maybe that's true. And the repetitiveness of those labels or that, that judgment assertion made, made you maybe perhaps begin to believe that that was true. And I also think about something like when you have a label, we have a very immature relationship sometimes to seeing people through those labels or beyond those labels, seeing the true person. And this is a very um, juvenile behavior for a child, right? A child who might be in a grown body, <laughs> but demonizes their parents. If you demonize your parents, you've see, you'll just see them as bad. And you can see this, we project this onto authority all the time. We project this onto our leaders. We project this onto celebrities. We project this onto our um, bosses or people in hierarchical positions in our society. And we will go all black with them, meaning like we won't see anything good in them. We'll think that they're all evil and we'll miss the gifts that they have for us. And so it's a very juvenile way of relating to any sort of hierarchical uh, persona in our life. And we do this first and foremost with our parents quite often. And we miss the gold that they have to offer us because we're too busy uh, labeling them as dysfunctional or evil or whatever name we wanna give to anybody that we don't agree with or who sees things differently than we do, right? So labels can make us blind to looking more deeply at the person. Labels also have the opportunity to call out energy in another. That's the power of a name, right? That's the power of a listening for somebody. That's the fifth chakra. But what I mean by this is when you think of somebody as stupid, evil, uh, they can't say anything right in your presence. It doesn't matter if they're a genius. It doesn't matter if they're an evolved light worker. It doesn't matter who they are. They're not going to be that for you because you have chosen to label them in a very tight box. Do you understand? All right, so the power of our listening to one another helps create the people around us all the time, how they're showing up for us. So labels can call out energy, can call out uh, also, if you think of somebody as wonderful and you hold the space for love and respect and sovereignty for that person, they're going to show up in a much more empowered and liberated way to be their best self around you. That's the power of labels or listening of one another. And then we can also right, completely cut each other off at the angles, ankles uh, or angles. That's a good one too. So when we're using words like this is racist, this is sexist, these people are blind, those people are white supremacists, they are communists, those guys are fascists, those those girls are Karens, which is another racist term. Stupid, crazy, evil, bad, wrong, dictator, calling Hitler, right? These things are so wild because the way that we relate to them, we are putting people in a box. We're creating more divisiveness. And I know as a white woman, right, who speaks English, I'm going to be really demonized for calling this out. But I, it is so critical because if we are calling people racist, or calling people white supremacists, or calling Biden supporters communists, or hating this country, or calling Trump supporters as people needing deprogramming, we are creating so much divisiveness in this world. And you might be listening to me right now and being like, oh, well, she agreed with this, so I'm going to throw her in this camp of that thought. Because we have, sometimes it's very difficult for us to listen to people who have different perspectives or ways of seeing things. If somebody, and I know we see this all the time, if somebody agrees with somebody that we have deemed as evil, wrong, or horrible person, whatever it is, like I see this so many times with my clients where like one sibling will say, well, you know, I like this about mom and dad. And the other one says, how can you like anything about them? Because they're just plain evil. 
we are blinded by our prejudices. We're blinded by our labels. We're blinded by our di divisiveness and di dismissiveness of other people. So how do we kind of pull this all in and how do we how do we find true unity? That's the conversation today, right? It's not conformity. It's not enslavement. It's not reprogramming people who think differently from us from either side of the spectrum politically or in our own families if we're seeing one another di differently. It's about honoring everyone's sovereignty, honoring that everyone has the ability to use their logic and reasoning in accordance with their own experience. That's tough because we're like, well, those people aren't using their logic and reasoning. With the, with the experience that they have and being in their shoes, they're doing their best that they can. That is a hard pill for a lot of us to swallow because we want conformity, not unity. So unity is never achieved through shaming others or through divisiveness or bullying. It's not. I mean, think about the playground. You didn't want to go be their friends. You might have pretended to be their friends, but then in the end, you're like, I cannot wait to leave this because I can have more freedom and be and find my tribe, right? So if you're listening, this is the tricky thing because we have a media right now. We have social media. We have mainstream media. We have celebrities. We've got people in, in um, positions of authority speaking out using such hateful speech and divisive speech. And if you're listening to this, you do not understand how much your mind can be hijacked. Your character, your morality, your your way of moving through the world can be hijacked by constantly listening to these people, to these this propaganda, this, this truth of others rooted in divisiveness or attempt at conformity. That's challenging because it's like, how do I see the truth then? How do I see the truth? How can I really stand for unity? If you're listening to this, entertaining it, reposting it, you are complicit in the divisiveness. I don't care what you believe, what side you're on, or what's going on in your family. If you're gossiping, or you're hate speeching, or shaming, or trying to bully somebody in to being like you, you are complicit in this. That's what that's how we are complicit in this happening. So we have to be strong and stand up for five dimension, five dimensional perspective of having the ability to rise above the polarity. So. What's the goal? We have to ask ourselves, is it the goal conformity or is the goal unity? And we we really have to recognize that so sovereignty is that freedom, right? So are we wanting to conform or are we wanting to truly have a unification or a unity amongst us in all of our divisiveness? And I mean, all of our <laughs> divisiveness. Yes, that too. And all of our uniqueness. How can we be ourselves and allow others to be the same them, themselves? So we have a couple traps here. Arrogance. Oof. Thinking that you have all the answers and somebody else doesn't. That is a huge trap. Another trap is fear. Fear of what others might do with their sovereignty, with their own logic, with their own freedom. And the third trap is downright dishonesty, is lies. It's believing malevolent, divisive narratives. Whatever you're listening to, it might be some YouTube person, it might be a mainstream media person, it might be your pastor who's creating more divisiveness in your church. You have to listen to your own direct connection to your intuition, to your God, to your morality, to your conscience and say, am I participating in divisive hate speech, shaming, etc. Okay. So who's doing the dividing? Those people who are participating, those complicit reposting, parroting these kind of things. And if you think about, if you listen to some great uh, critics of, of the media, and you can say the media by like whatever you're participating in listening to, okay? It could be social media, it could be mainstream media, the news, it could be a celebrity, it could be somebody who's in a hierarchical position. Malcolm X said it best, if you are not careful, the newspaper will have you hating the people who are being oppressed and loving the people who are doing the oppress oppressing. And the media is the most powerful entity on earth. They have the power to make the innocent guilty and make the guilty innocent. And that's power because they control the minds of the masses. Jim Morrison said, whoever controls the media controls the minds. And Brene Brown, who is an amazing author, she's a beautiful, beautiful leader also in this time that we're in now. And she said, it is in our biology to trust what we see with our eyes. This makes living in a carefully edited, overproduced and photoshopped 
uh, world very dangerous. This also makes it dangerous to watch something that you're going to trust, that like journalism, and you think, this is journalism, this should be telling me the truth, and not realizing how much of your mind you've handed over. So it's very, very challenging. I'm going to give you my... Um, well, I'm going to say this. Have you lost yourself in your label? So we're going to go a little longer here. When someone agrees with something that you despise, right, are you immediately putting them into a box? Do you use labels to describe those with whom you disagree in a dismissive and insulting way? The third thing is, is are you open-minded to see where you're still closed-minded? Oh, that's a tough one. And are you willing to consider that those with whom you allow to feed you with information, you know, and the influence have, may have hijacked your, hijacked your mind, may have hijacked your, your character or your morality? Are you willing to consider those things? So in order for a peaceful coexistence to exist, everybody, we have to have reverence, we have to have respect, and we have to have humility, the willingness to be wrong. And look at the words versus actions. It's very easy to get duped when people are speaking words, but they're not following up by the actions that they're participating in. So we get duped by the lies because it's just a superficial label, it's superficial language, and not really looking underneath of what's happening, what the consistent action is. So step one, in order to be able to create true and lasting unity, if you have somebody who is coming at you and either, maybe they're on the side of Biden and they're gloating, okay? Or maybe they're on the side of something in the family that happened and they were right, or that they have some sort of power on it and they're gloating. Or maybe they're on the other side and they're questioning something and saying, well, you, you're just blind, you're just stupid, you're just, you're hypnotized and you've just, you hate, you hate our family, you hate this country, whatever. Whatever you're faced with, here is a three-step sure way to create lasting and true unity just within yourself because you can't convince them to do anything right so here we go here is the three-step protocol step one don't take it personally whatever is being said recognize that those who behave in a divisive way through their words and their actions are at war with themselves they're at war with themselves they wouldn't perpetuate divisive language or behavior unless they had some sort of discordance within them that they are not at peace with. So that's step one. Remember, don't take it personally. Remember that that is going on with them. Number two, super important, use the power of your creative listening, like I said at the beginning of this talk, to bring you back to your heart, to bring you back to compassion, recognizing that this one thing or this one action that they have said or done is not the summation of their entire character of that person. All right, remembering, keep listening to them in a very loving, compassionate way. They might just be confused or they might just see things differently than you do, okay? Step three, seek commonality. Seek commonality, not conformity. This is true unity, seeking commonality. We all want to see ourselves, our family, our country thrive. Those who don't are not well, okay? But if you want to see your country thrive, they might have a different idea of how that is than you have. Might have a different way of seeing your family thrive or your partnership thrive or your business thrive. If we can listen deeply with respect for that other sovereignty, we might hear them differently. So if if those who are just set on destroying or participating in that hate speech, it's so crucial to offer them compassion, offer them love, offer them prayers, because all violence verbally or physically must be condemned. It must be condemned. Not just the Capitol riots, the Kenosha, the Portland, the DC, the Minneapolis riots, not just people who are hate speeching on the other side, but how you're spe hate speeching on out of your mouth or how people that you've aligned yourself are doing that. Then we can find true un unity. Then we can tr find commonality common ground for us all to move forward in our families, in our communities, and in our country. All right. I love you all. Thank you so much for joining me and feel free to share this. Thank you so much. And I've included in the notes some uh, events coming up as well as essential oils to help you align with your vibration with that vibration of unity. So thank you so much, guys. And until next time.